The competition heads indoors for the first time at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we have relocated to the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. We have two tests in the books. Earlier today, individual test number one was Ride, and it was Emma Lawson who ran away with this thing. She did, and she did it early as well. In the first two laps, she was the only woman to lead lap to lap and never looked back once she got that lead. Individual test number two belonged to the woman that many think will stand atop the podium here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Laura Horvath, when she got to that pig for the second time, goodbye. No one moved that pig like Laura Horvath did on both the men and the women. That was a statement move from Laura Horvath. Overall standings, though, it's Alexis Raptis, courtesy of two finishes inside the top five, who has your overall lead with 182 points. Laura Horvath is behind her at 176. And it's Emma Tall out of Sweden who sits in third, but only by three points over fourth and fifth place. It's time to get inverted. And if it's like, hey, what could Raptus be good at? Well, this, we are getting <laughs> inverted, as you said, Sean, but we're focusing on gymnastic skills. We went long on the bike. We did some classic CrossFit out in the North Park, and we're coming inside to do a skills chipper. Recipe for success is delivered by trifecta, what are you looking for here? Well, the word of the day, Sean, is equilibrium. The athletes are gonna be upside down, doing pirouettes, pullovers on the bar. You gotta be able to keep your bearings straight. Balance, patience, and precision is the name of the game. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier on the competition floor. Something to keep your eye on during this test. These yellow lines mark the sections through which the athletes have to complete these high skill gymnastics movements unbroken. If their hands don't start in front of the line and finish beyond the next one, they will have to redo that entire section. 10 women on the floor here for this first of four heats. Lane number seven is Fee Sagafi comes in in 24th place overall, but she has some chance to pick up some points here. Two 23rd places back to back, but that's a bike, that's a pig flip. Now we're getting inverted, focusing on gymnastics. She's a great puller too, so look for her to make a move maybe on the middle part on that pull-up bar. Stand by. The first of four heats is underway, and as Nikki said, you have to be unbroken between the yellow lines. And that's hands in front before you start, hands clearly passed before you finish, before you come down. And we've had freestanding handstand push-ups in the past in 2021, different format. The head, all it has to do is hit the pad and then extend through and then walk yourself again, unbroken to the next pad. The timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. And if you fall, you have to go back to the very beginning. We've already seen a couple athletes have to do that. Paige Semenza is one of them headed back. And that is Michelle Basnet, who gets through. And there's a huge pressure element. And we've seen this when Adrian Bosman came in to do the programming, is execution is now a part of this test of fitness. Second set of four here for your leaders as Alexia Williams just fell. She's gonna go back. Baznet is looking to go unbroken. Bailey Rail sits in second place right now and then down in lane at number three, Victoria Campo. Now Baznet has gotten through. Shawnee, look at the top part of your screen. In lane one, that's Shahad Boudetz. And she's trying to keep pace in lane six with Bailey Rail. Well, Boudet is now your leader here in this heat along with Rail in second. Now Baznet's getting hung up on the stairs here. Now she is through, so three women onto the 16 pullovers. Now we have seen this movement before, think all the way back to 2012. It was the opening movement in the obstacle course at Pendleton. They only had to do one though. And this is part of the element of what we inside the cross and affiliate do to play around with our gymnastic skills. And now we see it here as a major part of this skills chippers test. We talked about the keys to success and that, that equilibrium component. If you do not have experience in this realm of getting inverted, doing circles, doing flips, which is all part of our 100 words of fitness, Sean, is that this can have a massive impact on the later half of this test when you kick back up upside down. 
You can buy tickets now for the fifth annual Rogue Invitational taking place in Austin, Texas from October 27th through 29th. Bailey Rail is your leader. She's through 14 and counting of those 16 pullovers. She has one left. And she gets through. So Rail will now have to do a handstand on top of those steps and do a 360 before she can proceed down. And that's a 20-inch box that she has to kick up to. Full pirouette. Down the steps and past the yellow line. Rail has separated herself from Michelle Baznet and Shahad Budex. Baznet is currently in second. Abigail Doman is moving up as well. She currently sits in fourth place, followed by Sarah Kaya out of Turkey. Rail is through her first freestanding handstand push-up. The balance it takes to accomplish this, but the pressure that mounts as you get from rep three to rep four, knowing that if you were to come down here, you'd have to go all the way back to the beginning. Rail is through unscathed. And there's Bailey Rail's father waiting for her at the finish line. Seven minute time cap here. Rail back up and now onto her second set of four freestanding handstand push-ups. Michelle Baznet is on to her second set of handstand push-ups as well. She's through one of the eight, now two. Wow. Rail is done. And Baznet has gotten through her first set of four there towards the bottom of the field. Now it's up and over for Bailey Rail. This should not be a problem for her. Bailey Rail across that yellow line and she's gonna win heat one going away. 445.39 seconds for Bailey Rail. And it's Michelle Bassnett right now who's on your leader on the floor. Again, the standard here is just touch your head to the mat, come on up. As long as your feet don't come down, if you happen to bobble on the handstand push-up, you can repeat the movement. The other thing is staying in and your lane. As I say that, Bazan has to go all the way back to the start of this second set of four. So the other part of this, Sean, as you're about to say, is staying in your lane. This white section here is your hands cannot touch inside the black, or you also have to start over. Uh, Budev's just falling on her final handstand push-up, and she will have to go back. And what you're seeing is that you're seeing the effects of time under tension in this inverted position, how long they've been walking on their hands, the control it takes to balance, come down to your head, kick back up, and move to the next mat. It's a lot of shoulder fatigue, stability, and if that starts to go, once those strong muscles start to weaken, it's really hard to keep your balance in this inverted position. Michelle Bassnett, who qualified out of South Africa, trying to get through this final set of four. It's her second career appearance in the cross against the Bassnett as she falls and will have to go back. Shahad Budeps on the left, trying to close out her second set as well. And this is legal, you can't rest. And Budev is gonna get through, she can get across the line, this is kind of her hand though, went outside of the lane. You have to stay in the white portion. Now 20 seconds to go, and it doesn't look like anyone's gonna be able to join Bailey Rail at the finish. Baznet trying to get through as many reps as she can here, as we still have three heats to go. Bailey Rail, 445.39 seconds. That's going to be a strong time as we head in to the final three heats. The only woman to finish inside that seven minute time cap. Former level eight gymnast Bailey Rail showing what it takes to succeed in this test. Big sets on the pullovers, no issues whatsoever.
on these freestanding handstand push-ups. And once you get to that last obstacle, up and over and across the finish line, no problem for Bailey Rail. Greeted by her family at the finish line. And she will wait and see where her time of 445.39 will shake out with three heats remaining. remain for the women in their final test of the opening day of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we have moved inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazer has us covered down on the competition floor. Test number three is all about being upside down. And going unbroken, we saw that being the crux of the test in the previous heat. Multiple obstacle here on this gymnastic skill test. This is down and back chipper. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Balance and coordination. How is your equilibrium? How do you move your body in space, especially when you start to get busy? But you need to also balance patience and precision as well. Know when to go because these unbroken sections can make or break these athletes. Ten women will be on the floor here for the second of four heats. And in lane number 10 is Shelby Neal, making her first individual appearance at the CrossFit Games, but a former gymnast. Shelby Neal, 5'2", 150, making her first appearance here at the Noble CrossFit Games. But having that gymnastics background, this is one of those niche skill tests that we have at the CrossFit Games to test certain aspects of fitness, gymnastics being one of them. Stand by. We are underway. Time to beat belongs to Bailey Rail. Four minutes, 45.39 seconds. She was the only woman in the first heat to finish this test in its entirety inside the seven minute time cap. And it looks like in lane four, Rebecca Vittison went straight into the handstand, freestanding handstand push-ups. Shelby Neal and Sydney Wells did the same thing. Neal and Wells are your top two right now as Neal is done with her first set of four and Sydney Wells as well. Bethany Flores towards the front, but Shelby Neal is already on her second set of four handstand push-ups and this is no problem for the former gymnast. Wow. She got across the yellow line. That's all that matters before she came down. Here comes Sydney Wells in second place and in lane five that's bethany flores in third neil struggles on that step keeps her balance and gets up and over <laughs> that's the gamble you take when it's an event that's good for you now 16 pullovers now on the pullovers at the bottom you must start with straight arms and finish with straight arms but if you can get the momentum like you see from shelby neil 
The scoring hat on top of the screen will let you know who your leader in the heat is. Right now it's Shelby Neal. Her name is on the far left side of the screen. The number next to her name will indicate how many repetitions she has completed. Haven is the official gym bag of the Noble CrossFit Games. Scan the QR code on your screen for more. Looks like Shelby Neal open with a set of five. So she only has six more to go. Then you have Bethany Flores on the left side of your screen. Just a couple reps behind her. But Shelby Neal. This is this is how it's done. You're curious, like, oh, how are they gonna cycle them? Just like that. There are 24 total score repetitions in this test. And Neal is now going to work her way back through. Each section of the floor counts as one rep. So Neal will have to kick up into a handstand, complete a 360 before she works her way down the steps. And has to get over the yellow line for that rep to count, and she does, and she will break. Here comes Sydney Wells right behind her. And in lane seven, Emily Rolf. There goes Shelby Neal. Emily Rolf is that waiting to start her second set, her first set here on the way back. And Neal is through her first four. Sydney Wells is through two. Now looking at number three, here comes Emily Rolf. And Sydney Wells is over the line. That will count. That was close. Emily Rolf is done. But Shelby Neal has one section to go here, and she has more than a minute to beat Bailey Rails top time. And just a second's worth of rest before she gets into this ramp. It's the easiest part of this test, and she's wasting no time. Shelby Neal up and over, and Shelby Neal has our new top time as she comes across in three minutes, 57.57 seconds. And now the race for second is between Sydney Wells and Emily Rolf. Wells is going to break. Rolf continues. And Emily Rolf is across and that will be good for the second best time in this test as well as she takes second in the heat and now Sydney Wells is done and there is Sydney's twin sister Brooke who we have seen many times here on the floor at the CrossFit Games did not qualify this season but cheering extremely hard for her twin sister making her first appearance here at the CrossFit Games meanwhile Olivia Kerstetter and Ellie Turner are struggling back on the pull-up bar. Kerstetter had problems with those freestanding handstand push-ups. She's in the middle of your screen in those long pants on top of the pull-up bar. Less than two minutes to go before we hit the seven-minute time cap. I mean, think about the tests we've had so far today and how this fits in in a full day of competition. Then we have four total days is that we went long on a bike ride. We did some classic CrossFit out and outside, flipping heavy weights, doing pull-ups, some squats and med ball throws. And now you throw in this gymnastic skills test where execution is key, but at the same time, it's gonna test your shoulder stamina, your strength and stability all the way through from start to finish. Bethany Flores is through her second and final set of four free set hands and push-ups. Now this is Ellie Turner has yet to get through her first set of four. Less than a minute to go before we hit the time cap. Bethany Flores now on the final section. And Bethany Flores will make it inside the time cap. Right now, that would be the fifth best time that we have seen. It looks like Ellie Turner finally got through her first set of four. There goes Olivia Kerstetter. 
Just 17 years old here, competing for the first time as an individual at the CrossFit Games. We saw that misstep on the pirouette. Once you kick up to that 20-inch box, you have to do a 360-degree turn, walk down those steps, and cross the yellow line. But we're coming off 16 pullovers, so the balance is absolutely completely disoriented and coming back inverted onto the box. Shelby Neal has the top time, the only woman we've seen so far to go sub four minutes, 3.57.57 seconds. And for her, it was the speed at which she executed and the confidence that she did it with. Because listen, a lot of these athletes can do all these things on their own, but can you do it unbroken? Can you do it with the pressure that is mounting to do these things? And what ends up happening, athletes move very slowly so they don't fall. Shelby didn't do that. So her time being inverted was actually the benefit of her having not to go so slow to get these obstacles done. Shelby Neal now has our top time as four women in that heat get in inside the seven minute time cap. And the top three times all coming from this second heat. Emily Rolf finished second, Sydney Wells finishes third, and Bethany Flores fourth in the heat right now, fifth place in the test. Two heats remain here in the inverted medal. We are halfway through the third and final test of day number one here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. And Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Test number three, we're going upside down. And you gotta take calculated risks here. It's gotta be unbroken or bust, Sean. 30 foot unbroken handstand ramp, eight freestanding handstand push ups over that obstacle you see in your screen. And then behind that, 16 pullovers on the bar, and then work your way back to the start. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Anything changed after watching two heats? We've, we've seen it already, Sean, with, with who's finishing, who's not. Can you keep your bearing straight? How is your equilibrium when we get upside down? And then balancing the need to go fast versus the need to go unbroken. 10 women in this third of four heats, and two women who can possibly track down Shelby Neal's top time will be right next to each other. That's Katherine David's daughter and Ariel Lowen. Katherine David's daughter is one of the best handstand walk athletes we have in the sport. Two-time CrossFit Games champion, missed last year and back this year, but Ariel Lowen, Gymnast from three to 16 years old, some competitive gymnastics. You know that she is ready to take on this test. Heat three of four has begun. Time to beat three minutes, 57.57 seconds. Each section on the floor will count as one rep. And then you have those 16 pullovers on the pull-up bar. And then four more sections on the way back. 24 total scored repetitions in this test. And it's Elisa Fuliano and Catherine Davis are along with Ariel Lowen. 
your top three athletes, top of your screen. All of them through their first set of four, and Fuliano is oh. going to go right to work on that second set. David's daughter and Lowen right behind them. And Lowen has to go back, her feet touch the ground, leaves David's daughter and Fuliano as the leaders. Fuliano is through. David's daughter with one remaining, and now David's daughter is across. Here comes Ariel Lowen. Michelle, we saw Fuliano go unbroken. No athlete has done that yet. And the question is, did we need to do that at the front half? We've seen some athletes start to struggle when their hands get tired and their shoulders get fatigued. Maybe taking that extra second break that helps sustain that. Lowen was able to make up the ground on David's daughter. She'll be the second woman to those pullovers. 20 reps is what they're looking to hit on the scoreboard before they can make the turn. You can buy tickets now for the fifth annual Rogue Invitational taking place in Austin, Texas from October 27th through the 29th. Leader's name at the top of your screen will be on the far left. The number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that athlete has completed. The number next to everyone else's name will indicate the number of reps that they are behind the leader. It's like Fuliano on the right side of your screen has about three more reps to go. Took a break at nine. Catherine Davis on her to her left, along with Ariel Lowen, are just one rep behind her. Lisa Fuliano was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in 2021, and she knows that her competition days are limited. This is her second straight appearance at the CrossFit Games. She was here last year. In her rookie year, she finished 35th overall. And she is already done with those pull-ups, pull-overs, pardon me, and now back to the handstand walk, and she's going to go right into her first set of four handstand push-ups. Ariel Lowen is in second. She's up and over the steps on the right side of your screen. Here comes Catherine David's daughter in third. Now, Sean, one reason to, to go for it, other than having the ability to, is that you just might be in a rhythm. You might be comfortable where you're at. Kicking down may disrupt that balance and that flow for you. So some athletes will just carry it into the next segment. Time to beat the bottom left-hand part of your screen belongs to Shelby Neal. She did that in heat number two. David's daughter has now moved into second place in the all blue. Ahead of Ariel Lowen, who just fell. Lowen's got to go back. And here comes David's daughter. She's going to go unbroken to try to track down Fuliano here. Getting close. Fuliano's steps are getting harder and harder as his hands come down to the floor. Fuliano is through. She has one section remaining. Here comes Captain David's daughter. And Christine Kohlenbrander has passed. Lowen for third in this heat, and now oh. Davis' daughter is going to stay on her hands. And Fuliano is up and over. It looks like she's going to hang on if she can get over that yellow line. Davis' daughter is down. Fuliano keeps her balance, and she is in, wow. and she has the new time to beat. What a gamble for Fuliano. She knew she had to kick up because Captain Davis' daughter was running her down, and she about only had 30 feet left in her body to walk on her hands. 346.89 seconds, edges out Shelby Neal by 11. Davis' daughter now is trying to work her way up and over that ramp for the final time. And Catherine Davis' daughter, the former two-time finish winner on Earth, is in. She'll take second in the heat, third place right now in the test at 417.56 seconds. Leaders on the floor are in lanes seven and eight. That's Matilda Garns and Christine Kohlenbrander. Kohlenbrander on the right. Barnes gets in first. Colin Brandon will be right behind her. Seven minute time cap here. Still more than two minutes to go before we hit that. Well, Ariel Lowen is your leader on the floor. Lowen at the top of your screen. Now right in the middle. Trying to get up and over that ramp. And close out her test. Lowen is through. 
Amanda Barnhart looking to be the next woman to come across the finish line. And she is done. Sean, this is just a testament to the caliber of athletes we have at the top of the leaderboard. If you were to take a gymnastic skill test so niche like this, you'd assume athletes that just have this skill alone maybe be in the bottom part of the leaderboard because they don't have that balance of fitness. But we are seeing more and more of these individuals finish as the heats go on from heat three to heat four. Just shows you how well balanced these athletes are. Alice Kazan and Jamie Simmons are on their second and final set of freestanding handstand push-ups. Forty seconds to go before we hit the time count. And Simmons wasn't able to control herself across the yellow lines. But she was. That is going to count. Well, Kazan's taking a break, too. Now, here comes Jamie Simmons. He's going to have to start if you get across that finish line. Ten seconds before the time cap. Alice Kazan's trying to get in. Simmons has a chance here. Simmons on the right, Kazan on the left. Simmons is in, and I, ooh, that's going to be close. She's not going to make it. Did not get in inside that time gap. Just missed the buzzer. But Elisa Fuliano, 346.89 seconds is your new time to beat. One heat remains here in test three, the inverted medley. One heat remains here in the final test of the opening day of competition for the individual women at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games from Madison, Wisconsin. Glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. We have had two tests already, very different challenges. We opened things up this morning with Ryan, and it was Emma Lawson who rode away with it. Second year in the CrossFit Games, still one of the youngest athletes in the field, got herself her first win at the CrossFit Games. Moved into the North Park for the pig chipper, and it was Laura Horvath who was hovering around the front until she got to that 315-pound pig for the final time. Showed us why she is one of the favorites to win the entire thing. Test win for Laura Horvath, and that puts her in second place overall. Alexis Raftis has two finishes inside the top five. She's your overall leader with 182 points. Emma Tall, Ariel Lowen, and Emily Rolf round out the top five. Test number three, a completely different challenge that we've seen from the prior two. It's all about getting inverted. We're getting some gymnastic skills, handstand walks over obstacles, freestanding handstand push-ups from the floor, walking up a set of steps and doing a pirouette. Then we have 16 pullovers in the middle and working our way back. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What are you looking for here? The word of the day, Sean, is equilibrium. Do you have it? And this is the test that is going to show it if you do or not. And then we need a balance of patience and precision when it comes to these unbroken elements. Send it down to Nikki Brazier on the competition floor. 
As a reminder, guys, keep an eye out for these yellow lines. This test is about more than just high skill gymnastics. It is about unbroken sections. So the athlete's hands must start in front of the line and end behind the final section. Ten women on the floor for this fourth and final heat. You heard Annie Sakamoto talking about Danielle Brandon with the chip on her shoulder. She has been waiting to get to this test. I mean, this is really where she made a name for herself in these handstand walk pure tests, and she does need it with those two 21st place finishes. Right next to her, the woman who won the opening test, that's Emma Lawson. Emma Lawson wore the leader's jersey after event one, and now Ladies test two belongs to Raptus, and Raptus in the red and white. Your overall leader is also one of the better gymnasts in the field. Daniel Brandon shot out of a <laughs> cannon is already on her freestanding handstand push-ups, and she has yet to kick down. Sean, that's called rage walking. She's already through four, way out in front, and still has yet to come off of her hands. She has to get over the yellow line, and her head has to touch that mat. And Danielle Brandon is done, and now finally takes the break. Alexis Raptus sits in second place, and Emma Lawson is in third. Brandon done with the steps onto the pullovers in 45 seconds. She has 16 reps to complete here. <laughs> I don't know what else to add to that, Sean, but. The speed in which he has, that is going to pay huge dividends for her on the return trip because of the time she had to spend inverted. Almost a third of the time that other athletes were taking to get the best time we've seen so far. 20 is the number she has to hit in order to work her way back down the floor. You can buy tickets now for the fifth annual Rogue Invitational taking place in Austin, Texas from October 27th through the 29th. There are 24 total score repetitions in this test. The leader in the heat will have her name on the far left side of that scoring hat. The number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that athlete has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many reps by which they trail the leader. So Brandon has just one more pullover, and she's going to head back down the floor. The time to beat is 346.89 seconds from Elisa Fuliano in the prior heat, and that is in serious danger right now. Well, you look at her background, competitive gymnastics, but also pole vault in track back in the day. And Brandon with a fall. She's just got to retreat to that yellow line, so not too costly there for her. And that goes back to the precision, the precision and the patience element. Listen, we all want to race, but when it comes to this, having to be unbroken in these yellow to yellow line sections is a massive element to this test. Laura Horvath is there behind Daniel Brandon. She has yet to get through the first four sections. She's in second place overall coming in. But Danielle Brandon, who comes in 21st place overall, looking to rocket herself up the standings if she can get a test win here and put 100 points in her pocket. Final rep here for Danielle Brandon. And she is over the yellow line. And this should be no problem for Daniel Brandon, although she just got hit with a no rep. Her hands were not completely behind the yellow line when she started. And that shouldn't matter to Daniel Brandon, because she's going to absolutely demolish the top time. Danielle Brandon takes test number three in convincing fashion, 312.75 seconds. I mean, we picked her for a reason. Alexis Raptus is in second place. She's your overall leader in the white top and red shorts at the bottom of your screen. And next to her is Paige Powers. Now, Annie Thoris' daughter on the left side of your screen, third place right now on the floor. The former two-time champ went back-to-back -back CrossFit Games in 2011 and 2012 and is the only woman to compete in three different decades at the CrossFit game. Paige Powers has pulled ahead of Alexis Raptus as Raptus is going to take a break. Powers is up and over, and Paige Powers is in. 356.62 seconds will be good enough for third place in the test. Now here comes Alexis Raptus trying to hang on to the overall lead. She is in. 
And that will be another top five finish for Raptus as Thor's daughter comes off of her hands and will have to retreat back to that yellow line to start again. That is that, that moment, that, that tough moment where you have to sit there and just wait because that miss was a fatigue failure type of miss. So you can't kick up too soon, but you also don't want to waste too much time before getting over that final obstacle. Seven minute time cap here. So Annie Thor's daughter has plenty of time. Well, the woman known as Iceland Annie is across. And Annie Thor's daughter closes out test number three in her first day of competition. She will take fourth in the heat, 12th in the test with a time of 455.94 seconds. And now, here comes Emma Rossi. Laura Horbath, who has struggled with tests that involve being on her hands in an inverted position, is having problems again here in this test. It is really just the only hole in her game. Everything else is top notch. Everything else is the elite 0.001% of this. And it's just one of those things. All athletes have them, some less than others. And depending on the other tests, because we don't know all of them yet, hopefully for her, this is just the one test that she has to basically survive and then get back the rest of the weekend. Emma Carey is up and over that ramp. And she is across. Emma Carey will take 17th in the test. Six minutes, 17.68 seconds for her. As Gabby Magawa and Laura Horvath. Magawa is on the left, Horvath on the right. They're training partners. And they are still out there on the floor. Along with Harin Freova and Emma Tall. 20 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Now for Laura, usually when there's a handstand push-up event, she finds herself in the bottom 10. Shoring up a hole for her is going to be somewhere in the mid 20s, to be honest. Danielle Brandon will win the test. Three minutes, 12.75 seconds. And did that for a section, honestly, probably faster than I could have run it on my feet. <laughs> Just came out, shot, shot out like a cannon. Start to finish, Daniel Brandon. In the center lane, lane number seven. We had one athlete that tried to go and broke into two sections, but none tried to get three. And Daniel Brandon, leaning on that gymnastics background, bringing out the old pole vault routine from her track days in college. This is just the perfect setup for an athlete like Daniel Brandon. points in the test win for Danielle Brandon. The fastest time by more than 30 seconds as Elisa Puliano will take second. Paige Powers, Shelby Neal, and overall leader Alexis Raptus rounding out the top five. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier with Danielle Brandon. Danielle, you basically came out the gate sprinting on your hands. You did several of those sections unbroken. How did you decide to attack this test that way? Um, a lot of times uh, in the handstand event, it's all by feel for me at this point. Um, but it's about time they made it a little harder with the pullovers. Um, I just honestly just decided to go for it. I thought I could take a chance, and it worked out well. And um, I couldn't help but feel even a little emotional after um, with the crowd. It was really cool. Yeah. Now, we know that CrossFit is just as much a mental game as it is a physical one. What does it do for the rest of your competition weekend having this win under your belt? Yeah, ending the day on a win um, is amazing, but it's a really long weekend and I'm here to fucking fight, so. Congratulations. Thank you.
Danielle Brandon with the test win. Bailey Rail, a solid performance. The women are now done for day number one. Men are coming up next. You can head to games.crossing.com for all the 2023 Noble Crossing Games information. Stay with us, everybody, as action continues here on day number one of the 2023 Noble Crossing Games from Madison, Wisconsin.